This chef is John George. He runs many restaurants, some of them are my favorite, and he's one of the most legendary culinary figures of our generation. In New York City, he has a beautiful restaurant down in the seaport called The Fulton. It's right on the water for dinner and a view. It's spectacular. At The Fulton, the chef has a burger that's inspired by the Oklahoma Smash Burger, but instead of smashing shaved onions onto the burger patty, this crazy genius decided to smash fried onions that are par cooked into the patty. And the results are rather impressive. But we'll talk about that later. For now, we gotta get started making a crunchy onion smash burger. So let's just jump right into it. First thing we need to do is make our crunchy onion. And it's a simple process. We're just gonna cut our onions, soak them in buttermilk, dredge them in flour, and then deep fry them. Simple. We're gonna take our onion, we just wanna cut the top and the bottom off, and then cut it in half, remove the paper, and then cut it into thin slices. The thickness is kind of up to you. I'm just going for something that's not too thick, like a real onion ring, and not too thin that will sort of disappear once fried. Then break it all up and get them into a bowl. Then we're gonna take some buttermilk and we're just gonna cover them and allow them to soak. Let them chill in the fridge for at least an hour. Next up, we're gonna make our burger sauce and we're gonna start it by making our own homemade mayo. We're basically gonna make a riff on our spicy Calabrian chili mayo, which we did a whole video on. Four different easy mayos. I'll leave a link down in the description. First starts with an egg yolk. Separate the egg from the yolk and get the yolk into a narrow, tall container. Then we're gonna go in with about a tablespoon of red wine vinegar, followed by a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, followed by like a teaspoon of this kind of granulated dried onion, another teaspoon of granulated garlic, and a tablespoon of these chopped Calabrian chilies. And we're gonna add one cup of oil. Measure out the oil, get it into the container, and with an immersion blender, turn it on and start pumping it until a thick emulsion is created. And this is why we're making it ourselves. Using store-bought mayo thins out the sauce a little bit once you add everything, and I want it nice and thick. You see how thick that is? That's gonna hold up to a burger. Then we're gonna add some salt and some pepper, and I'm gonna take a few pickles and then a few hot cherry peppers, and I'm just gonna dice them up and then add them to the mayo, and it's gonna play the role of like a relish in a burger sauce. It's gonna add some brightness, it's gonna add nice texture. Mix it all together, get it into a bowl and it's ready to use. Now the burger sauce is ready, we could just let it chill in the fridge cover. So now our onions have been soaking for a little over an hour. You can keep them going. They'll probably be a little bit better, but I like to do it for at least an hour. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Got a little hotel pan here. I'm gonna fill it up with flour. Then we're gonna add a generous amount of salt to the flour, get it all mixed up. And we're gonna take those onions, drain a little bit of that excess buttermilk and then right into the flour. And then with our fingertips, we're just gonna to toss it and try and cover every inch of all of those onions with that flour. After they're really coated, I sprinkle a little bit more flour on top just to be safe. And then over to the stove, we can get a pot of oil up to temperature, about 350. And once it's hot, we can take a spider or one of these mesh strainers, toss the onions one last time, get them into the strainer, shake out any excess flour and then into the oil. And we're gonna check the oil which has dropped, so we're gonna keep the heat on high and we're gonna gently move them around throughout the cook. You can see the heat's moving back up. We want it to recover back up to 350. And the idea is we're going to fry them until they're nice and crispy, but we do not want them to get too dark because we need to cook them a second time. And if we go too dark now, it may be too dark after the second cook. Once they're in this light golden brown, get them out of the oil, season them with salt, and get another batch into the oil. And as you can see, this batch is nicely crispy. It's not too golden, but it still has crunch and it's sturdy. Once you go through and fry up all the batches, get them out to dry on the wire rack, season them with salt, and then they're ready to be used. And as you can see, there's like a nice light golden brown, not too dark, but they're still super crunchy and that's what you want. So now here I've got some ground short rib sliders from my local Italian supermarket. 80-20 short rib fresh ground. It's about as good of a burger meat as I can ask for. But this is a total of point nine ounces. I need patties around 0.35 to four ounces. So I'm just gonna measure them. I'm gonna get a little plastic on the scale just so I don't have to wash it. And then I'm gonna cut some parchment paper squares so when I smash the patties, they don't stick to the spatula or the press that I'm gonna use to smash them. So I'm gonna get those little patties on the scale and what do you know? It's 3.5 ounces. I guess I'm horrible at math. So I'm just gonna get those on the parchment sheets and then we're ready to cook. I'm gonna use the new maiden griddle or you could use a cast iron. And I'm gonna get two burners on. The back burner tends to get hotter so I'm gonna put that on about medium low and then the front burner on high. For the burgers, I'm looking for about 350 to 400. I'm gonna dip a towel in that pot of oil and I'm just gonna rub a light coating of that oil onto the griddle. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to toast my bun. I'm using a Martin's potato bun. I'm gonna 
toast it open so the inside gets some texture. And once it's nicely golden brown, I'm gonna close it up and brown the bottom and the top of the bun. Get that off the griddle, and then we got our patty. We're gonna go with one patty, and we're gonna season it nicely with salt on that one side. Then I'm gonna take my spatula, dip it in the oil, and add just a little bit to the pan, just to get a nice sear. Then we're gonna smash that patty with the press, and you gotta put your body into it. You're gonna need the little elbow grease to get that patty nice and flat. Once it's nice and flat, I like to give the griddle press a little twist to help it release from the patty, and then we can remove the parchment paper and season the patty with salt. Next, we're gonna take the fried onions, start to pile them on top of the raw side of the beef, and almost form a similar sized patty out of the onions. Sort of press it into the patty a little bit, and we wanna just cook it on that one side until we can create a nice crust. The pan's hot enough, it should only take two or three minutes. While that's cooking, I'm gonna take the spatula, grab a little bit of oil from the pot. That's gonna help fry and crisp up the onions when we flip it. And now it's been a few minutes, we're gonna take our spatula, scrape under the patty, and then we're gonna flip it right into that new hot spot we made with the oil. Bunch up those onions, add a piece of American cheese, and then just let that thing sit and crisp up and develop a crust on the underside side of the burger. And it's literally gonna create like an onion patty that really gives me like hash brown vibes. And it's gonna be this texture on the underside of the bite that is intensely oniony and intensely crunchy. And while that finishes cooking, we're gonna prepare the bun. On each side of the bun, I'm gonna go with that nice, beautiful, thick burger sauce. See how thick that is? That's gonna hold up to a burger. Then we can go on top with the patty a few slices of pickles, and that's it. Close it up, give it a bite, and taste that crunch. And if you know me, you know I love texture. And this burger packs the texture and packs the flavor. And it has everything an Oklahoma onion burger has, plus crunch. And if that doesn't sell you, I don't know what will. And that might be my most favorite burger that I've ever had. The recipe's gonna be down in the description. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Go feed yourself.